We're talking today about wood and specifically um, how do we know if our wood is dry? Um, there's several methods to find out if our wood is dry. Um, most obvious is to buy um, either kiln dried or, or approved um, wood or wood which is already been dried for you. But however, most of us or many of us still wish to dry our own wood. Um, and when we do, we need to know that it's ready to burn. So I'm going to talk through today a few basics of how to ensure that we're not trying to burn water, we know water doesn't burn. Um, the fire service use water to put out wood fires, so we need to make sure as much of the water is driven out of the logs as possible. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at when we're looking at our, our wood logs here is the growth rings. So I'm going to bring this close. If we look at the, the growth rings, we will see that there's splits all the way through the growth rings. That shows that it's dried out and that it's, it's nice and dry. We then look at the bark. The bark should come away easily without too much effort from the log itself. And underneath the bark, again, should be nice and dry. Two very simple ways to ensure our log is dry. Looking at the outside of the bark, we need to ensure that there isn't any nice green moss growing on it. Moss only really grows in water, and lichen does too, so we don't want any of that. Um, moving on from there, the next easy step is this. We take two logs that we've previously dried and we strike them together. If you listen, the ring is very high pitched, akin to uh, banging two drumsticks together. Very high pitched noise, very um, easy to, um, to, to hear, um, very simple too. Um, if the wood was wet, the sound would be dull and the thud sound, much more akin to stumping in a, a piece of turf or similar. Um, thirdly, uh, the probably the most important piece of kit that you should ever um, purchase yourself if you're going to, to season your own wood is, is a tester, an electronic tester to ensure that um, you can test the conductivity of the wood. The conductivity test basically um, checks how much water is inside the wood. There is a process to this, however. It's not just sticking the thing in the end of the wood, which many people do. Firstly, if we look at our monitor, we're going to turn it on. It's got a zero. I'm going to bring it in close. Can you see there, there's a little picture of a tree. That shows that it's on the wood setting. Okay, we don't want the brick setting. That The brick setting is obviously to test for masonry. When we place the tester into the wood, we do not place the tester in the end grain for two reasons. Number one, we've got splits in the end grain, as we've already ascertained, and the electrical current won't travel through those splits. Um, but number two, the end of the wood is often very dry, um, and typically it won't match the moisture content in the middle of the wood. So what we do, we take a piece of wood, we split the wood in the centre with, with, with an axe, like so. We then test along the grain. Okay, if we test against the grain and there's a split, then we'll be testing the split. So we don't tend to test the split. I'll show you the difference. If I turn my tester on and I test in the end of this piece of wood, this is nice and dry by the way, it will show 7% moisture. Okay, very low moisture content. It's a nice dry piece of wood that I've had seasoned for some time. If, however, I test where I've just split the wood, so I've split along this face, like so, bearing in mind it's been dry for a long time, you'll see the moisture content is 12%. Very, very significantly higher than testing the end grain. Now, if you imagine we've got a piece of wood that tests 20% on the end, which is kind of what we're allowed or we're told to burn, and then we split it, we're possibly going to have a differentiation of upwards of 5% of moisture content, perhaps more, meaning the center of the log is going to be at least 25%. So we always split our log along the length, um, and, we then, and we then check along the grain. Very simple, very pragmatic. If you follow those simple methods, you can't go wrong. Thank you, goodbye.